Hi, my name is Tristy and welcome to day 10 of the 30 day mean stack Honolulu challenge. If you've made it to day 10, then congratulations, well done. We're a third of the way through making our mean app. Um, so today uh, I'm gonna look further into our, um, our elements that make up our customers page. Um, but we're going to take a slightly different tack. So up until now, we've been working on different views and the views have HTML and CSS and, and um, bootstrap classes that we've been using to style uh, and, um, and kind of structure out our, uh, our web pages. But what I want to do today is take a slightly different tact and start to look at some of the details and the information that sits behind our web pages. So when, um, when we want to save data for our customer, we want to save that somewhere. And when we went through, if you can think back to the very first um, MeanStack video that went through the Mean installation process, one of the things that we had to do was go and set up a Mean, uh, sorry, a MongoDB, a Mongo database. And um, as part of that process, we had to grab um, some details of the database, come back and put it into our configuration folder. Now that string um, that had all the details for our database is our data store. So that's where all of the data for our, um, our, our customers in our app is going to live. Um, but one of the things we have to decide and, um, and tell our app is how are we going to um, format the data and what, what actual data fields do we want to record for our customer? So if we go down to the storyboard, um, we see that there's a whole heap of different fields that we want to record for our customers. We want to know their first name, their surname, their suburb, their country, their industry, email, phone, um, whether they've been referred um, and what channel they, um, they first contacted uh, the, um, the app makers organization from. So that's kind of part of our scenarios that we're working through. Um, but, but we need to store that data somewhere. So how do we do that? Well, what we're gonna be using to, to structure and store our data is um, a package called Mongoose. Um, and you can find Mongoose over here. So if you go to um, mongoosejs.com, uh, you see that this is the Mongoose page. So this is the package that the main stack uses to take the data that we enter in our app and record that into our Mongo database. Um, and the Mongo database will store the data in the way that Mongoose kind of tells it to, um, i.e. the way that we tell Mongoose to store the data. Um, and this is a little bit different. So MongoDB is a little bit different to uh, other databases that you may be used to before if you're used to um, SQL type databases. Um, Mongo stores data in collection and documents and we'll, we'll look at what that means and how that actually works. But to do that, to find out how Mongoose works, let's have a quick look at their docs. So we go to read the docs. Um, and the place that we're interested in is this page, which comes up first, and that's around schemas. We want to define the schema, and the schema is what, um, a schema is kind of like a template, right? It helps us identify the different type of data that we want to record in our database. And it, and it helps us identify what elements of the data uh, need to be there before um, something can be saved. So how this works is every time you want to save data with Mongoose, we need to set up a schema and that schema relates to a MongoDB collection. So if you think about our app so far, users is one collection of data that we, um, that, that MongoDB will, will store for us. Customers is another collection of data that MongoDB will store for us. Each customer is a document. Okay, so if I have 12 customers in my database, then my customers, the fact that I've got 12 of them, that leaves, that's, that's a collection of customers. Each customer individually 
is a document. So MongoDB is a document store. So it stores documents in a collection. Um, so it's a little bit different if, you, um, if you're if you not familiar with the way databases work. But the great thing is that it's really, really simple for us to set up and use. So how do we actually set up one of these schemas? Well, uh, you may have already gone through and had a look at some of the different files that were created when we used the Yeoman generator. But if you haven't, one of the files that, that, that was created was a model for customers. And let's have a quick look at what that looks like. So I just make that a little bit smaller and go and find our model. So if you go to the app, um, the app folder, which is where all our server related information sits, um, we go down to models. And you can think of the models folder as a place where you see all your data models. And in essence, at the moment, each one of these models forms a different collection of data. Okay, so it's kind of, it's terminology might be a little bit new to you, but collections are what we're kind of working with here. So we've got two collections that we've defined so far. We've got user and we've got customers. So if we look at the customer server model, um, let's have a quick look at what, what this page is actually doing. So at the very top, we've got, we, we're requiring mongoose. Um, and what that means is saying, uh, when we when we get to this particular script, because it's got JS on the end, so it's a JavaScript file. When we get to this file, we want to use the mongoose package. So we've um, so we've already sort of determined that we're going to be using mongoose, and that's um, that line pretty much does that for us. We want to use the mongoose package, um, and what we also want to do is within that mongoose package, we want to use something called schema, and just instead of having to type out all of mongoose.schema every time in our code, we'll just refer to it as a schema. So that's essentially what we're trying to do. When we jump down to the very bottom here, we're saying that our mongoose model that we're creating here is called customer, and the schema for that model is the customer schema. So where is that customer schema? Well, that's the code that we've got in the middle here. So the customer schema is what we're using to call our new schema that we're creating. So if you think of cus as a schema, if you think of schema as a template, what we're saying is when we save a customer record or a customer document, um, we want to be able to save a name a data field for name, so name related data. Um, and the name related data will be a string. So it'll be kind of a collection of either alphabetical or numerical kind of digits. Um, the, when, when the data is saved, if there's no data in that field, it will default to sort of null, so there'll be no data there. Um, it's actually going to be a required field. So if data isn't passed through for name, when we try and save the customer record, it's going to fail and it's going to respond with an error of please fill customer name. And we've got a trim at the end, which is really just about trimming down the data to make sure that if there's any spaces and things like that. When I'm talking about spaces, I'm not saying if you had a string such as this one here that you were trying to save as a name, it won't get rid of the, the spaces between the words. What it would do is if the string had a whole heap of spaces on the end, for example, it would trim that data off, um, or the, it, was, it would trim the, the spaces from either end um, and keep your, your data nice and concise. Um, moving on, the next field that we already have um, defaulted for us as part of the Yeoman generator is the created field. So when we create a new customer record, it's going to have a date to identify when the record was created. And it's also going to tell us the user that created the record. So these, these three fields are set up as um, are set up by the Yeoman generator for us, kind of as default. And they form our template. So these are the data these are the data fields that we can use when we're recording or creating a customer record. Um, so we want to add some more fields, right? So when we looked at our functional design, we had first name, surname, suburb, country, industry, email, and so on and so forth. Well, if we want to add those 
and allow them to be data that we want to capture for our customer schema, um, all we need to do is go through and add all those data fields in here. So for example, for name, well, I don't want to call that name anymore. I just want to call that um, first name. Um, and I, I don't actually want that to be required because some people may not have a first name. In some countries, first names aren't mandatory. So, and then we just go through and add in everything else that we want. So I'm going to have um, first name, actually maybe I'll just spell this out to make it a little bit easier. I'll camel case that, so first name, surname, um, and we just go ahead and add things in. Um, first name and surname, they're both strings, they're going to default to null if there's no data, and they'll be trimmed if we have some extra spaces. Um, we'll go and add suburb, suburb, for now suburb is going to be a string as well. Um, we're going to have country, also a string, and we've got industry, industry, we've got email, we've got phone, we'll come back to these in a second and just have a look at other data types other than string. Third. And we've got channel. Okay, so I know that first name and surname, I want them to be strings. And actually, what I would like is for all of these to be lowercase to begin with. So excuse that and channel. Um, okay, so, but what are our other options other than strings? So let's have a look at that. So we can see that the permitted schema types, we can have string, we can have number. Um, so what I might choose to do is, for example, um, oops, get rid of that E. For phone, um, I may choose that, well, I don't want it to be a string, I want it to be a number if you're very keen on enforcing numbers. The issue though with using um, number is if you put any formatting such as um, brackets to indicate area codes, um, Mongoose wouldn't like that very much and Mongo wouldn't like that if we, um, if we try and say that. So those are the types of things which start to get a little bit more um, tricky. If you're starting out, using strings is, is a fine way to, um, to mix things up. Um, referred, what I might choose to do is for referred, I, I just want that to be a boolean. So I want that to be a tick box. So I could just call that bool um, or I could actually write out boolean. Um, I can just type out boolean if that, um, if that makes it easier. Oops, why don't you like that? Um, we've, for channel, so for um, suburb, country, they're, they're just strings. Um, Industry is going to be a string. Uh, email is going to be a string. Um, everything here is pretty much just going to be our stream. So what what we've now done is we've allowed um, for when we when we go and create our pages, so these um, the pages based on our wireframes, we will be able to map to these data fields. And we'll be able to do that um, by referring to the field names um, that we've sort of set up here. So when we, um, when we get to um, actually creating these pages, I'll show you how you can actually put the data in these fields. Um, all right, so that's, that's kind of it for today. Um, hope that's a nice and easy introduction to setting up um, our customer's model. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, please subscribe to the channel and uh, check out bossable.com for more details. Um, and do, if you do have any questions, please let me know either in the comments below um, or on the Bossable page. See you tomorrow.